the last of the notes for this chapter are on Dalton's Law. Now, let me explain to you what Dalton's Law says. I'll watch it up here. Wow. You're going to collect. Up till now, we've been working with gases just in a syringe. So we haven't had to worry about having a mixture of gases. All right. From now on, we're going to be collecting our gases a certain way. Let me show you how. First off, you've seen this before. You've seen me do something like this before, and I've shown you what a barometer is. I'm going to fill this thing. It's called a udiometer up with water. Okay? I fill it all the way up. Whoa. And my thing is exactly what you're going to be doing later in this period. You're going to be back there. Only you're not going to be using a udiometer because that's not big enough. You're going to be using a graduated cylinder. But same principle. You fill it up. Look up here. Fill it up all the way to the top. Put your hand over the top. I'll just use my finger. And then we're going to turn it upside down in some water. Now, of course, the water stays. Okay? It doesn't come out. Now, you're then going to take the end of a hose and put that, I can't do it, and that's why you're going to use a water trough, but the end of the hose will be underneath in the water, and this end will be collect, it will be generating a gas, which will then bubble up into here. Now, as that bubbles up, I'll just lift it up to show you how it'll be bubbling. You'll see it bubbling up, and you'll be collecting a gas. So we'll be able to measure exactly how much gas we collect. We'll be able to measure the temperature of the gas, because it'll be the same temperature as the water. We'll be able to measure the pressure. And I'll show you how to do that uh, later on today, too. But eventually, you'll get a certain amount of gas. Now, let's say you get this much gas. You might think to yourself that, okay, now I can just measure that gas, and I'm all set to go. All right? All right, so I just look in here. I read the volume. I measure. I know I'll know the pressure because uh, I'll show you how to do that. And um, I know the temperature. But you don't, don't. You actually don't know that yet. Take a look here. Let me take this out with my hand over the top. Look here. The gas you have in here is not just the gas you were collecting. It's actually got a lot of water vapor in there because that was bubbling through the water. So what actually was happening here, turn that light off, is this. Okay? Here's what you're going to You're going to have a test tube like that one up here. You're going to throw a Tums. We're not going to do, this was using a, a, like magnesium and hydrochloric acid. We're going to use a Tums and a Rolaids. Kind of kill two birds with one stone. We'll, we'll compare Tums versus Rolaids. We'll throw a Tums into a acid. What do you think is going to happen when I throw a Tums into acid? What's it going to dissolve. do? You know, besides dissolve, what's it going to do? It's going to fizz. What's it going to be giving off? Do anybody know? What gas do you think is going to be giving off? Don't tell Al Gore. Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, right. Carbon dioxide will be given off. And it will go up through the hose, and it will bubble up that udiometer. Okay, but it won't be. It won't be just carbon dioxide. It will be carbon dioxide mixed with water. Because here's why. Take a look at this little picture here. Okay, as you're producing your gas, there's the gas. That's the pure gas going up through the hose, underneath the water. As that travels up, the bubbles rise. The water level lowers. But look, also in there are water molecules. So that's got to be taken account of. I have a mixture of gases, and that's what Dalton's Law talks about. What do we do with a mixture of gases? Okay, Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. It simply says very, something very easy about gases and mixtures. You want to know what the total pressure of a gas is, a mixture of gases is? You just add up the partial pressures of each gas. That's all you do. Very simple stuff. No, nope, they only had a single. They had to do it. We'll have to do it tomorrow. Well, the for whole first period is going to be spent t teaching you this and doing two examples, and then the second period, and even more because we're not going to take a break. We don't have time to take a break today. We'll be spent doing the lab because it's if it was normally. A uh, full period, if it wasn't for a delay schedule, we probably would have been able to have it in one period. But we definitely want to get started as soon as we can. All right, so uh, yeah, that seems pretty obvious, guys. Here's the equation. You want to know what the equation looks like for this? Pretty simple. P total equals P1 plus P2 plus P3, etc. however many gases you have in the mixture. You're breathing a mixture of gases right now. I love asking this question. You always get some crazy answers. You're breathing air right now. It's a mixture of gases. What particular gas do you think makes up most of the air? 
nitrogen, right, not oxygen. People often say oxygen is the first one. And then, yeah, last period I had first oxygen, then I had carbon dioxide was the second one. Carbon dioxide makes up about less than 1%, less than 0.1% of all the air you're breathing. It's a very small amount. Um, but uh, nitrogen is number one, 70%, about 20% or so is oxygen. And then the rest of them are some other trace gases. Uh, so you're looking at a mixture, you're breathing a mixture right now. If I want to know the partial pressures of each one of them, I can ask you a question like this, and I will ask this in the homework tonight. You don't have to do it for tonight, by the way. Homework will be checked on Monday. Um, but the homework's going to ask you questions like this. I have two questions to give. Here's the first one. Very easy. Copy that guy down. If you look at that question, you could probably figure out what you're supposed to do without too much trouble. But there's a reason I've told you from day one that we should write the stuff down to the side and write the equations out. Okay? It keeps everything straight. It allows me to make changes in the, in the uh, units if we need to. And I do need to in this case. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to write down to the side the given information, like I've always done. P total equals PA, PB, PC. No one's ever accused me of being PC. Politically correct. Politically correct, PC. You know, like, forget it. It's okay. L O L out loud. Okay. Can you read the question and figure out what your things are? What's your total pressure here? Anybody? 2.41 Correct. 2.41 atmospheres, not automatic teller machines. How about PA? What's my PA? Pennsylvania! <laughs> 485 core. Yeah, 485 core. Now, the reason we write all this stuff down, it's not very hard. It tells you B is 0.893 atmospheres, and C is your unknown. The reason we write this stuff down is it allows us to make our changes now. And it should be obvious now which one I want to change. Torque. Yeah, I want to change the torque because the other guys are in atmosphere. So I'll do that. I'll put torque on the bottom, atmospheres on the top. One atmosphere contains 760 torque, and I will do that math. Get your calculators out. I need your help doing this one. The next one's going to be even longer. What do you get when you divide 485 by 760? What did you get, Ellie? She got 0.638. Everybody else get that? Atmospheres? Look good? Okay. Let's write the equation out and then rearrange it. My equation is P total equals PA plus PB plus PC. That's all I have. I know A and B, I need C. So I want to leave C by himself. I'm going to subtract away A and B. PC will simply equal P total minus PA plus PB in parentheses. Okay? Just rearranging the equation. Plugging my numbers in, my P total is 2.41 atmospheres. Minus, parentheses, PA is 0.638 atmospheres, and PB is 0.893 atmospheres. Now, you remember your order of operations, right? What has to be done first in that problem? The stuff where? In the parentheses. In the parentheses. So do that first, subtract it from that guy, and what do you get for PC? You could actually 
without using parentheses, just have made both of them negative. So minus this, minus that, but either way. What we get for an answer? Make sure we did it right. Any one? Some one? 0.879. Anybody else get that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of yeahs? Okay. Uh, why don't I really care if that's right? Because if you have this all set up and you've done everything else, as I told you a hundred times, the most points you could lose is one now for doing that math wrong. It'd be nice not to lose the one point, but the rest of the problem is where I was really creating you are. All right, good enough. But 0.879 uh, atmospheres is, a, is the pressure of the missing gas. If you did, I mean, I, everybody's good with that? 0.879? All right. Um, okay. Let's do this other one. I, it's really this last one. And this is the last example I'm going to do for the chapter. And it's got a little bit of everything in it. Today, if you're here today, you're seeing pretty much everything. You, this problem has Boyle's Law in it, Charles' Law in it, Gay-Lussac's Law in it, because it has the combined gas law in it. So all of them are there. It has some conversions. It has Dalton's Law in it. It has everything. So if you can do this problem, which a problem like this on the test would be worth at least 10, maybe 12 points. If you can do this, you can do anything on the test as far as the math problems are concerned. Now, there are other things on the test. Like I said, about 25%, maybe 20%. I'm not sure. I'll have to look at it again. It's going to be some questions on kinetic theory, properties of gases, things like that. But the actual calculations, this has got pretty much a little bit of everything. Oh, by the way, do put a... Decimal point after the 20 there. And uh, uh, that's that's all you really need. I forgot to put it. Okay. Alright. Now this guy really illustrates why I taught you to do the conversions. By writing this, three steps, writing it down, equation, rearrange. We No one really needed to do that back in D equals M over V days. You all need to do, the, do it now. Nobody can do this problem in their head or just grabbing the calculator and plugging numbers in. You just can't do it. You have to write the stuff down. So let's do it. V1 equals V2 equals P1, P2, T1, T2. The reason you can't do it, not only do you have six variables, there are, not only are there conversions in each one, you also have changes from vo oh, volume one to volume. Which volume is it? Which pressure is it? Which temperature is it? It's very confusing if you don't write it down and pick it out first. Okay, now let's figure out what V1 is. What's my what initial volume in this problem? Everybody agree it's 250? Right? Okay. V2, it says what volume will it occupy? Don't worry about the dry gas part. I'll explain that in a second. That's my unknown. My initial pressure. What's my initial pressure, Jared? Jared, very high voice. but uh, She says 800. Jared says 800. And Jared's wrong, speaking with the voice of Emily. He's not wrong, really. 800 millimeters of mercury. Let's go back to why I said we did Dalton's Law. When I collected my gas in here, what did I say was in here? Not just the gas I collected, but what? Water vapor, because it bubbled through the water. So that water evaporates. That's the pressure of both of them combined. I need to subtract away how much of that was due to the water vapor. How am I supposed to do that? With this. Get those sheets that I just gave you. Oh, so it wasn't like wrong. Like, I, I no, you weren't wrong. It, 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 as long as you correct it. Jared was wrong. Correct. Jared was wrong anyway. Yeah. Um, if you look at this sheet, it's got the pressures and the temperatures of. And by the way, does this make sense? As the temperature goes up, what happens to the pressure? It goes up too because won't more water be evaporating, right, at a higher temperature? Okay. So can you tell me? How do I know how what the vapor pressure is? Where am I going to look? Anybody want to figure it out on that chart? So it's a chart at the top. How do you know which of those pressures to use? What do you think we should use? Look for the 800. No, you're not going to look for the 800. What is the pressure correspond to? A what? 
Yeah, the one at 20 degrees Celsius. Now, do you know which one to use? 17.54. Yes, 17.54 millimeters of mercury. Now, in significant figures, subtraction, I have to go by the least number of decimal places. So it's basically like just subtracting 18 from 800. What are you going to get? 700 and what? 82. Good. Millimeters of mercury. You see why 782 and not 782.46? Because decimal places are your limiting factor in significant figures, not significant figures. And even if it was significant figures, that would still be wrong. You'd have too many. All right. P2. What's my second pressure? I threw that in there even. It doesn't give me a second pressure. How am I supposed to know it? Because it says at STP. 760. 760. And that guy will not limit me because 760 is standard. T1, my initial temperature. Everybody see where it's 20 degrees Celsius? But Kelvin. that's not good enough. Got to convert it to Kelvin. Okay, 293 Kelvin. And then T2 is, again, not given, but it is told to me to be 270, it's to be standard temperature, which is 273 Kelvin. All right, told you this guy's got just about everything in it. All right, let's do uh, my equation. V2, P2 over T2 equals V1, P1 over T1. Now, before you go and rearrange, let me just show you something. I, also, I said Boyle's Law's in here, Charles' Law's in here. They're all in here. Sure they are. If I, close, if I cover up the T's, there's Boyle's Law. If I cover up the P's, there's Charles' Law. So they're all there. Okay? Let's, what am I going to do to both sides? I actually got a wrong answer on this. At this point in the year, I should not. I shouldn't get a wrong answer on the algebra for this in 7th or 8th grade. What do I do to both sides to get V2 by himself? What do you think? You multiply by T2 and then divide by P2. Exactly. Multiply by T2 over P2. Good. And T2 will cancel, P2 will cancel. It will leave me with V2 equals V1, P1, T2 over T1, P2. There it is. And then I plug my numbers in. My initial volume is 250 milliliters. My P1 is, now don't do all this and then forget to use this number. Don't use 800. It should be 782 millimeters of mercury. And then I've got my T2, which is 273 Kelvin. All over, all over to A. All over 293 Kelvin. Thank you, Mr. Thatcher. He's going to tell you that terrible song. Does Kupta use that too? Yeah, he does. <sighs> anyway, um, P2, 760 millimeters of mercury. Okay. At this point, if I did it right, my units will cancel, except for oops, milliliters. And that's what I want, because I am solving for a V2 after all. And what do you get? I believe it's 240, is that right? Or am I wrong? I'm just trying to remember from last period. Is that right, 240? Yeah. Yeah. Now look at that problem. Now, if I said in the beginning, the first day of class, we're going to do stuff like this, you know, think of all you're using to get that problem. And here's the crazy part. This is the end of this chapter. Next chapter, this, all this, I'm going to combine with all that you learned to be able to do stoichiometry. So we'll be doing stoichiometry and equations and mass and volume and moles and everything all in one 